Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue talking about managing your post-show period as a competitor. In last week's episode we started to delve into some really good tactics to help you manage your post-show period as successfully as possible. And this week I'd like to look into more ways that you can come through this period as a competitor as objectively as possible. If you do enjoy this video, then hit that thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and alert that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video every Monday. In last week's video, we started to look at two of my top tips on how to manage your post-show period. We looked at directly after your show, so the night of and the following day, and then that following week. Today we're going to look at four more ways to manage that period after that first initial week and I'm hoping that by the end of this video you're going to feel more in control of executing your plan as you move forward. Once that first week has passed since competing, hopefully most of the emotions that you feel towards the show, depending on how you got on, how your prep was and directly after that show, You've had a bit of time to process and today we're going to go through a four step guide to help you move forward and attack your next phase. Step number one is to start to talk about how you're feeling, how you got on and anything that's coming up that you feel would be a really good idea to get off your chest and it may help you to start processing those feelings. Naturally, when you start to talk about how you got on at your show, depending on the result, it can bring out different feelings, different emotions that were connected to you competing. Whether it's your first time or your 10th time, every show is going to bring a different element of how you feel about how you got on. Every prep is different. Naturally, as you progress as a competitor, preps start to become a little bit more manageable with the fact that you become more experienced in what you're doing and you know what's coming. But each prep, trust me, will bring its challenges. So starting to build your inner circle before you compete, as you go through your prep and after, and then having those people to lean on after your show is a really good way to start to process those feelings that little bit more. Now, I call it an inner circle because over the years, I personally have found that, you know, sometimes building up to a show, people get in contact and they like seeing you lean, shredded, getting ready to compete. And sometimes those people drop off after a show and that can be something you can take really personally. It's not realistic to be shredded all the time. As a competitor and going through several preps now, when you get to stage lean, naturally you want to stay there. You're looking good. You're looking on point with your physique. But health wise and lifestyle wise, it's not realistic. So start to understand that if the people that are there talking to you, encouraging you before your show are maybe not there after the show, but you've still got that inner circle you're building, those are the people that you want to rely on post-show. Before your show, if you've got your cheerleaders and people getting involved, sending you words of encouragement, use it in a really objective way. Let it motivate you, let it give you opportunities to talk about your prep, how you're getting on, and you can let that fire you up. But just bear in mind that it's those close people, like your parents, your best friends, maybe siblings, different family members. You can lean on them for that support and talk about those nitty gritty subjects after you compete. Post show is a whirlwind of emotions and you need to be able to speak openly about how you're feeling and not feel bad, how you might be feeling about different foods, training, it's sensitive subject, so choose your inner circle carefully and make sure those people understand what you're trying to achieve. And when you do talk to them, if you're going to be talking about subjects that are very sensitive, 
then take it upon yourself, take ownership to tell them, I want to talk about this subject. Can you be someone that I can lean on? And if they can, and they can be objective, and that's going to be awesome for you to be able to just get those feelings off your chest. Step number two is always be willing to learn. Throughout all of my videos on my YouTube channel, this is one of the things that I always try to hit home. If you want to become a competitor, you need to learn along the way. If you go into this thinking that you know everything, or equally that you know nothing, it's going to be very hard for you to continue progressing. If you feel like you know everything and you don't get the result you want, where do you then go? If you feel like you know everything and you do get the result you want, can you then progress that? Do you have enough knowledge to do that? On the other end of the spectrum, if you don't give yourself credit for knowing what your body likes and doesn't like, how you process things as a person, your character traits is going to be limiting as to how much you can achieve in this sport. So if you can come somewhere in the middle, that'd be pretty good. You want to try and get the elements of knowing that you've always got more to learn, but also that you know yourself. You know that if you eat a certain food and it reacts badly, that potentially maybe you wouldn't eat that again. You know that if you've got the potential to overtrain if you don't get the result you want when you compete, if you've competed several times and then you put pressures upon yourself to do more after a show to then compete next time and bring a better package, if you're really hard on yourself, you can look at managing those expectations and try to understand that you can only do your best. So if you can continue to learn throughout your journey when you prep, when you off season, every phase that you go into as a competitor, this will facilitate you continuing to progress as an athlete. Particularly post-show, if you can learn from your competitive experience, so what you could have done better and also what you did really well, you can then start to plan your next show, whether it's that you need to go into an off-season first or whether you're going to compete again fairly soon. What can you learn from that show and how can it help you move forward? When we talk about learning, it's also really, really useful if you're able to get feedback from the judges. It doesn't matter where you placed, feedback is always awesome. Even when I've won shows, I've always requested feedback because I want to continue progressing as an athlete. Feedback is hard to sometimes take if you haven't got the placing you wanted. It may be that you've got an area that you know you need to work on and then your feedback mirrors that. It can sometimes be quite hard to take that critique but I would recommend that you use any feedback you can gain as a resource for you to continue your journey as a competitor. If you take things too personally and don't let it help you strive towards your next performance, then you're going to continue to be in a negative mindset about your own physique and your ability. And I've been there when I first started competing. If you can use feedback as a resource, as fuel, it's really going to help you as a competitor to continue progressing. Step number three is to continue planning. So in last week's episode, the first thing that I recommended you do is plan directly after the show up to a week leading from your show. Now past that, using step number one, talking to others, building that inner circle. Step number two, was learning from your experience on how that can move you forward. You can then use both of those methods and feed that into planning the next part of your journey. So by talking to your inner circle, and hopefully that will include a coach, you're looking to plan where you need to head as a competitor. By learning what you did well and what you could work on, you can then plan the phase that you're gonna enter after your show. If, for example, you're needing to gain more muscle mass, then I'd imagine an off season is gonna need to come next. If it's that you've done really well at your show, you've potentially qualified for a show that's not too far away, you're gonna then need to look at 
potentially a period of time if you can facilitate it getting a little bit healthier bringing your calories up bringing your training down a little bit whether that be reducing cardio or what you do in the gym with your weight training you can then move forward into the second part of your prep. No matter what happens, ideally, directly after that show, the thing that you want to avoid is going too mad on having that time out, especially with food. I've seen some crazy, crazy weight gain after a show with other competitors that I've come across. And, you know, we're looking at kilos and kilos over one week. Because all of those foods that have been off limits as you prep have then come into play. And, you know, depending on what your structure is after your show, you can end up doing quite a lot of damage. You've been in a prep for a long period of time. Your body weight is low. And what with water retention from bringing in the carbohydrates and various other things, you can end up becoming quite uncomfortable quite quickly. And let me tell you, it doesn't feel that great. From personal experience, everyone does this differently and that's absolutely fine. But I personally would look to plan as much as possible. You want to avoid feeling negative about yourself, about your body, as you move forward into your next phase. Potentially, you can then start to negate not gaining too much weight during that first initial week and beyond. You can then go into your next phase feeling really good. By all means, after your show, go out for a nice meal. You know, I spent a week after my last show not tracking my food. But I still did things like keep my protein up, keep my supplements in, stayed hydrated, kept moving, kept training. And ironically, I'm actually two kilos less today than I was on show day. And that could be down to dropping, you know, the stress of a prep potentially overtraining because a lot of training goes into a prep and it wasn't intentional to lose this weight my calories have gone up my cardio is not there anymore after my last show I decided that I did not want to just go completely apeshit with the food and I wanted to cruise into my next phase feeling as good as possible what would lend itself really well is remaining open-minded, being objective with your planning. When you compete, you never really know what the result's going to be. So if you've already premeditated how you want to get on at the show and that doesn't materialise, if you're not open-minded, this could lead to that peak of your show and then falling off the end of a cliff when you come out the back of a show. If you haven't got that result you desired, it can leave you in a very dark place. So I really would recommend that before your show, on show day, and particularly after your show, you remain open-minded and objective at all times. The fourth step to successfully managing that post-show period is to bring everything I've spoken about in today's episode and last week's episode and attack that next phase with intent. You want to be able to push on as a competitor, use the experience of your show and move forward. The more experience you can get with competing, with prepping, with off seasons, with everything you need to do to contribute to you being a successful competitor. And if you can feed into that motivation to continue after your show, again, depending on your result, there's a lot to process. And I've spent the last couple of weeks looking at this objectively with my coach, talking through it with my bodybuilding friends and planning my next phase and how I want to attack that. And I am fully fired up for 2021 now. Lots of things on the cards for me. And I can't wait to attack that phase. Over Christmas, I'm going to have some time out. So between Christmas Eve and the third, I think it is, on the Sunday, I'm going to be off tracking my food. And I'm just going to enjoy that family and friends time. Have some nice foods, different foods that I don't normally have. And then on Monday, the 4th of January, I am ready for that 2021 push. And that's what I mean by attacking that phase. Understand what's ahead of you, what you've achieved, 
and move forward with faith in yourself, your ability and what you want to do in your next part of your journey. Okay, so let's recap on today's four step approach after that first week post show. So we want to look at talking and building that inner circle. We want to process those feelings and start to be able to move forward objectively. Second of all, always be willing to learn. Next, we're going to look at planning after that initial week, how you're going to move forward into your next phase. And then the last bit is to attack, have confidence in yourself and your approach and know exactly what you're looking to achieve. And when you're ready, get to work. I really do hope you've enjoyed these two episodes about managing that post-show period as a competitor. If you have, hit that like button for me, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to alert you every time I post a new video every Monday. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have an awesome Christmas and I will see you soon. Peace out.